should we buy or sell this gambling stock? So first off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of today by liking and subscribing. So under the other themes, I have a theme called this, you know, hated industries. So these are, are basically industries with uh, all kinds of PR issues. Uh, one of the stocks in the gambling industry is Boyd Gaming, 16% uh, from the 52-week low and minus 24-ish uh, percent away from the highs. Uh, the primary PR issue for the gambling stocks is that uh, many of the games are addictive and uh, another another thing is that uh, the probability of uh, profitably uh, gambling is uh, extremely uh, low. So yeah, here is their website. Um, they have all kinds of different, you know, venues, uh, gambling, but also dining and entertainment. Though it's uh, definitively in the gambling uh, space where the odds are most in their favor. So let's first look at the charts, weekly data points. Uh, this is very, you know, big picture. So if we go way back here to, uh, you know, the lead up to the major global financial crisis, then uh, we certainly see here that uh, the blue 100 week moving average was a pretty big deal. It was a spectacular time to short uh, the stock. Uh, here it became, it became support, very viable, resistance, shortable, resistance, shortable. Here it becomes a support again, major move. Here you have an easy buy, easy buy here in 2016, uh, easy shorts here in uh, 2019. So it is pretty clear that this is an extremely important moving average for this stock. Uh, we are currently at that moving average again, battling. Uh, currently, it is very favorable to the bears. Uh, they like to short it. Uh, the bulls were able to profitably buy that moving average uh, not that far back. Uh, so, yeah. It's an indicator that both can favor the bulls on the and the bears de dependent on the context. But currently, it is clearly in favor of the bears. The dangerous thing for the bears is that one, two, three, four times the bulls have been able to test the underside. Uh, they haven't broken out yet, but um, you know it, it's becoming a bit dangerous. So I do think that some bears are tightening their stops a bit just because of that fact. Uh, here we have the daily data points. Let me just draw it in. We are testing some major uh, horizontal resistance currently. Uh, so let's here look at, uh, yeah, let's go to these other indicators. Uh, so MACD might send a bit of a buy signal if uh, the bulls are able to do uh, to push a bit higher. Accumulation distribution is uh, is a bit healthy for the bulls. Uh, going to the daily data points, uh, yeah, accumulation distribution definitively corroborating the most recent move. RSI is trying to establish a higher um, low level. Um, yeah, I mean there is some there. The bulls are doing something, notwithstanding that you know they are fighting uh, vigorously the 100 week moving average. So I write 100 weekly moving average resistance, uh, 4 in favor of the bears. Uh, uh, but that, you know, minus 4 is very contingent on the 100 weekly moving average uh, resistance continuing to offer that resistance. The problem for the bears is that we are seeing some signs that the bulls are building positions. So they are trying something, but... As long as the 100 week holds, uh, then the bears, they just have more reasons to be optimistic than the bulls. Here is the seasonality data for Boyd Gaming. Uh, so we usually see some seasonal strength over the last 5 years in green, 7 years in, uh, in blue, and 10 years in red, heading into uh, mid-August. But that is when we usually see some weakness into the end of August. So the seasonality is a bit messy. Uh, over the last five years here to the left, we do see that August, September are very 
uh, if we go here to the, the last 10 years, then there's a very sharp drop off in seasonality from July to August. August is actually the second weakest month over the last 20 years, then August is the third weakest month for Boyd Gaming. So it usually is a pullback month. Uh, I give the Bears minus 5 here on uh, the seasonality. They, they have a pretty good thing going with August. Uh, so yeah, if I was a bull, I would not feel that good about August. But as we saw to the right of the screen, August could be uh, a bit bullish into the mid part, but then you know it usually is given back. Uh, let's look at the fundamentals. So Sachs has a number three hold for Boyd, A value, A growth, and A momentum. So the style scores literally could not be better, but the industry rank is a bit mediocre. It's in the bottom 46% uh, gaming. Market cap, uh, 6 billion US dollars, uh, dividend 1%. Now let's look at the insider activity. Oh, the insiders are primarily selling. So uh, yeah, insiders are feeling a bit bearish and they know more about the fundamentals than anyone else. 13 analysts are covering the stock. Uh, the price target is 31% above us, the highest is 57% above us, and the lowest is 6% above us. Uh, I give the bulls a 4 here on the fundamentals. Some good points, some bad points, it's a bit messy, frankly. Here are the correlations, uh, so 95% with uh, the S&P 500, 69% here with the BJK, which is the uh, gaming ETF. Then you have uh, no data with the, the IBET ETF. Uh, and you have 30% positive with the WISE uh, ETF. Short term, 78% with, with S&P 500. 78% here with the gaming ETF. 77% with the IBET. And that is this one. The I, I bet sports game betting and gaming ETF. And then the wise ETF uh, is at minus uh, 14%. So the strongest correlation we do get short and long term is with the BJK. So what happens with the BJK is very likely going to affect Boyd Gaming. So yeah, in this case, we have a major, major rounding top uh, pattern. So let me just uh, draw that one in. Major rounding top. But this is also a very mature rounding top. It, it was very good to, to short this ETF, you know, um, early 2021. But now uh, it's fallen down substantially. Uh, the key level to watch is definitively this purple 20 week moving average, super easy for the bears to short. Um, but let's zoom in a bit here because um, now uh, the, the bulls stopped right below that resistance level. So it, the re resistance is still in play. Uh, looking at the dailies, the 100 daily moving average has been a key resistance level. But it's been one of those levels where the bulls occasionally goof around above it, but then the bears come back with a vengeance. Hence, yes, it is bullish that the bulls are able to get above it, just peeking above it here. But looking at the history here, uh, it's not really been a good time to turn bullish uh, when we, we break above it. Usually it's much, much better to buy a uh, low end of RSI. Because then you have some uh, profits that you can you can lock onto, even though we do not get you know some major breakouts. Because it's statistically much easier to get the bounce during a downtrend than to nail the low. Yeah, looking at RSI here, we are bouncing from this uh, support level on RSI here, uh, but we have seen you know some nice gains uh, so far. MACD, clear buy signal here. So there is something uh, afoot. If you look at this entire downtrend, you see that uh, we didn't get those buy signals on the weekly MACD, but now we have this very clear signal. 
Also here on RSI, we are trying to establish a higher level. So the bulls are doing something. Here is the relationship between Boyd Gaming and the BJK ETF. Yeah, we have seen that Boyd outperformed very substantially, but now it has entered a period of underperformance. Uh, we are back into like uh, the midline here of RSI, so it's a bit a bit of a noisy level. So let's look at the seasonality, whether that one will give us some better intel. Yeah, so in green here over the last five years, uh, we usually see Boyd underperform into the 31st of August. In blue over the last seven years, yeah, I usually underperform until the same time. In red over the last 10 years here, we usually see some outperformance, but it is clearly uh, messy. Here is the relationship between the gaming ETF uh, and the S&P 500. Yeah, a lower highs and lower lows. So yeah, the very definition of a downtrend. Usually broke below some horizontal support here, so yeah. Uh, let's look at the seasonality here, like uh, that, if we can get some data there. Okay, so in red over the last 10 years, yeah, bearish in blue over the last 7 years, usually see some outperformance into the 10th of August, but then massive underperformance in green over the last 5 years. Yeah, outperformance into 22nd-ish of August, but then some underperformance into early October. Uh, the relative performance data was a bit messy, so I give the bulls a 1 here. Um, we do end up with a minus 1 here in favor of the bears. Uh, so we are still struggling with that 100 weekly moving average uh, resistance. Uh, and as long as it is in play, um, the bears have more reasons to be optimistic than the bulls. The bulls are, however, making some moves. Um, but it's all about, you know, that major score. So it doesn't really matter for the bulls to have those small wins if they can't smash through the number one resistance level. Similar to, you know, sports. You know... It's actually scoring a goal, that is th that is what counts. Attempts, these sort of matter, but they don't really end up on the scoreboard. So yeah, it is what it is. Uh, one of the stocks I considered to make a video about was RCI Hospitality Holdings. Uh, the key line here is the combination of the purple 20 week moving average and the blue 100 week moving average. So we do have a bit of a double resistance here. Looking at the daily data points, uh, the daily blue 100 day moving average is very clearly a key resistance level that RCI is uh, fighting at uh, the moment. Looking historically at RCI, we can see that you know in this period 2016 into 2020, it formed you know, a very major uh, rounding top uh, pattern. So it can easily be very bearish during a, an overall bull market. And we see that during that pullback, it retraced all the gains it made uh, in the prior rally. And if it were to do that again, then there would be very substantial downside uh, still. Another, another stock I considered to make a video about was Mondelez uh, International. Yeah, the primary reason I didn't is because it's it's a bit messy. There's no like clear trade at uh, the moment. Looking here at you know the daily data points, it has a very strong tendency to move in these rise decline time cycles, which means that it is very viable if you get it at you know the low end. Uh, it is also very shortable at you know the high end of the time cycle. But now it's we already have seen a very substantial move. So even though, yes, we have been able to get above the 200 daily moving average, the better entry opportunity was back here, or even, you know, back here in uh, mid-June of this year. So it's all about, you know, the timing, really, of uh, the trade. So yeah, whatever you do, of course, uh, you want to use uh, some stop level. 
uh, be market neutral and uh, if you want you know to get fancy you can go into the option market you know to hedge uh, trades and also put on trades that are inherently uh, market uh, neutral the key thing about the option market is is to always have a limited uh, and clearly defined risk uh, to get into those uh, infinite risk option trades that is just uh, a very bad idea.